welcome to Asian Pulse Television. I am your host, Crystal Chan. Thank you for turning into your informative and educational network. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Hanukkah to you all from our team at Asian Pulse Television. It is the time of the year to spend with family and celebration of enjoying with family and friends. And don't forget also to giving back. Not everyone is blessed with good jobs and good health, as well as giving to the charity. I will be right back after these words from our sponsors. Buying or selling a house is a difficult process. Get Brem Prakash from Saba Realty Limited to find you your dream home, whether it's your first house, upgrading, or investment property. Always at your service with a fast, friendly, and honest opinion. Brem Prakash will guide you through the entire process. Get in touch with him today for a free, no-obligation consultation at 778-840-5866. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. Community Outreach Pharmacy, providing in-home pharmacy services. This includes our specialized diabetes and blood pressure monitoring program, free blister packing, free deliveries, and an in-home injection service throughout the whole Lower Mainland. Call us at 604-777-5601 for more information. Today in our studio, we have Annie Ohana, a teacher at L.A. Matheson, to talk about the year 2021 and to talk about all the ups and downs our children had to face in 2021. Have a look. Hello and welcome. As you all know, this is the second last show of the year. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Hanukkah. From this team, Asian Pulse team, to all of you, whatever festival you are celebrating. It doesn't have to be Christmas, but if that Christmas you are celebrating, Hanukkah you are celebrating, or you're not calling it anything. So happy holidays to all of you. And uh, for that, we want to thank everybody for the whole year, the support that we have received from you, the phone calls, the guests that we bought, you always call us and they say, can you bring that guest back? And today is one of those days that I'm bringing that guest back. And, uh, but I really like uh, your input in that. And when you talk, when you call us, we respond. So hope that you have a very quiet, a very safe and healthy holidays and stay safe. With the new variant going on, I think we all know what the protocol is. 10 people, your family, 10 people, or your family plus one family, as long as over 12 are vaccinated. So these are some of the new protocols that have come in effect now. So we will be following that during this holiday time. Mm -hmm. So my guest today is Annie Ohana. She's an activist. She's an anti-racist um, teacher, advocate, and uh, she is also a teacher at L.A. Madison in Surrey, and she has been here before. And I wanted to bring her back and talk to her to find out what was the year like for the teachers, for the people that are in education field. Was it a very difficult year because over 12 got vaccinated, now over 5 until 11 are supposed to get vaccination, so what is going on with the school system and your children? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much thank for coming you in. so much for having oh, me. I know back. it's your day off and <laughs> yeah. you always look for a vacation. <laughs> uh, it's all on good. On your vacation, you are coming. Absolutely. My hat goes off to I, you. I, I, anytime you call me, I'm here. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes. So just reflect mm. of whatever we just, the year that it was. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, it covers basically two years, right? Yes. Yeah, two school years, basically, yeah. or at least the end of one and the start of another. Um, it's been difficult mm -hmm. uh, because, and let me go almost go backwards with it. Here we are just starting winter break, and teachers, you know, we, we got to that finish line barely. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> 
barely because it, it really was mentally like full of anxiety, full of, you know, really that, that trauma that, that we had to deal with the last year and a half. And to come back to 100% in classes, mm. um, we fought very hard this summer uh, for mask mandates, for vaccinations, um, you know, for, for increase in infiltration in our schools, for air, uh, you know, cleaning the air properly. A lot of that was a fight. It wasn't just, yes, we're going to do that, we're good, relax, yeah, take yeah, a break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anything, it was rallies. It was parents and teachers coming together uh, to fight for hopefully what would be a safer opening. Mm -hmm. And it has been, I, I have to say, but we saw over the last three months just how mentally how difficult it actually was. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also mindful of that January to June period yeah. where we had, you know, the second wave, the third wave, and those were incredibly difficult. Um, you know, we had moments where we wanted to shut down, we wanted to go remote, and we couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, LA Matson Secondary, or the area where we were, we had a positivity rate of over 20% at one point. So these were all highly difficult situations. Um, but uh, I have to say that overall, we did take care of one another. Our students, our families were amazing. Once those vaccines were rolled out, people got vaccinated. Uh, I know it was a very high vaccination rate in, in, for teachers overall, for students as well. And, and I really have that memory of September when we got back to school and every student had their mask on. Yeah. We didn't have to scream at them to put their mask on. There wasn't a question. You know, we know it's uncomfortable. We know we want nothing more but to take it off and be able to see one another. But it was great to see that in our community, you know, those discussions were had about you're in a building with 1,300 people. Uh, how do we keep each other safe? So on the balance, you know, it was, it was really having to look out for one another and, and to doing that but also a bit of a fight, a bit of a struggle. And we still, we still have questions, we still have demands, we still want things to get better because here we are going with Omicron and this, I'm hoping not a fifth wave, um, but if there is a fifth wave, those questions are gonna come back mm -hmm. about whether our schools are safe places to be. Mm -hmm. Do you think, especially the winter right now we have, and there are so many portables in mm -hmm. the city, mm -hmm. And they said, open the window, open the door, open, <laughs> get the fresh air in. Yeah. Uh, is it possible for teachers to be able to do that? Yeah, no, not so much. And, and I have to say that's been one of our biggest concerns is that it seems that people don't understand what our schools are like. Yeah. And especially in Surrey, where we are filled up to the brim, unlike yeah. other districts. Um, portables are highly problematic to begin with. They're too hot in the summer. They're too cold in the winter. Um, they're not large enough. Like There's so many, so many things wrong. And absolutely, in a winter scenario, when you do need that filtration, that's literally what's keeping us safe. Yeah. It's not really that accessible as people might think. Um, our students, our staff, our, our teachers, our EAs, our, our janitors, you know, they deserve safe spaces to work in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are all issues that are coming up. The idea of class sizes, uh, we are always full. There is no, you know, to, to think that you can make space, it's not possible in many uh, Surrey schools. Uh, if anything, you just, you have your 30 and, and or 24, whatever it might be, and that's it. Um, it's usually crowded. Uh, it's usually difficult, especially for portable users to open those windows. So these are all larger issues as well, right? How quick is the government investing oh. in education uh, to build more schools, to actually think about reducing class sizes? Those are all larger conversations that really, because of COVID, have become really crucial to understand. But, but thank you for bringing that up because that's something, yeah, it sounds like an easy solution mm -hmm. until you look at what our schools are like and you go, oh, wait a minute. This is not so easy to do, actually. Yeah. Class size always have been an issue. Yes. <laughs> you know, 30, 35 uh, students yeah. in the classroom. There is no teacher that be yeah. able to provide one-to-one -one care or be able to support that when you have subject. But I think due to COVID, that class composition and class size mm -hmm. has been put in the back banner. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about that. I think everybody is dealing with what the crisis in hand, the yeah. teachers have to face, yeah. face day in and day out. Yeah, yeah and, and that is true, but I think a lot of us were thinking about that, about yes, COVID is at the forefront and, and certainly we're mindful of like the health and safety factors of yeah. that. Yeah. But everything from inclusive schools, you know, you know, how many kids you have in class, uh, anti-racist education, decolonizing, all these things are supremely important. Mm -hmm. And, and we, 
we can't necessarily stop all that because of yeah. COVID. Because actually what's happening with COVID is as a result of some of these things. Yes. Had we smaller class sizes, we wouldn't have so much worry and concern mm -hmm. as we do now when schools are so full and classes are so full. Um, so you're right. And, and I think COVID de definitely is on that front burner. But I hope people understand that if we solve some of these other problems, yeah. actually then whatever comes our way, we can handle it in a better, uh, with, with better answers, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than what I find is very reactionary. Yeah. Um, we have too many kids, open a window. Uh, we don't have enough filtration. Well, now we have to find money to, to pay for that and to get new filters in our schools. Like It's always after the fact. Yes. Um, thank God we haven't, uh, well, I mean, we have seen death, right? COVID has killed many people. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want that to be the situation. I don't want it to be that teachers are in hospitals and kids are in hospitals yeah. and then we act. That That's how we're feeling right now. Everything's always so reactionary. After the yeah, fact. Yeah, it's after the fact. And that's a problem. Yeah. Um, so that's why these other issues are actually very important and should be on the front burner because mm -hmm. they're going to solve things in a preventative way mm -hmm. rather than waiting until people are sick, people are losing work, or God forbid they end up in a hospital and, uh, and are facing health repercussions. Mm -hmm. Well, recently the kids from 5 to 11 mm -hmm. supposed to be vaccinated. Yes. Yeah. Is it going as fast as I think 12 and over? Yeah. It was pretty quick to me yeah. how I seen what was the percentage like there so many people got vaccination as soon as they opened up Absolutely. but with 5 to 11 mm -hmm. there is still i talk to parents yeah. they are not very clear should yeah. i wait yeah. should i go and be in the first one in the lineup yeah. so this is the conversation that people are having Absolutely. what is your take what do you yeah. see in your classroom it, it was great news first of all uh, because you we were waiting right you we were yeah. waiting they were testing it so you know thank god it's finally here uh, yeah the pick up seems to be uh, slower than what we had for the you know age 12, 12 and older yeah. mm -hmm. i think that was a result of you know teachers in the classrooms getting their vaccination their you yeah. know parents are getting vaccinated and the kids are just sitting there and thinking why not me yeah. so i think that was part of that idea that the you know the once we were allowed to and the teenagers were allowed to that they, they wanted to get it also many teenagers are working yes. and you know that they have other parts mm -hmm. of their life so Absolutely that, you know, we saw very quickly a pickup. Um, I think families are, and I think it just depends on the family, to be honest. A lot of multi-generational homes where you have grandma, grandpa, you know, uncles, aunts, you know, everybody living together. Absolutely, I think those families are seeing the need to go right away as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I would imagine with Omicron um, that perhaps maybe we'll see a faster pickup uh, because now, you know, you absolutely want to protect the kids as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think it's been as fast. And, and my thing is always, um, your kids are with other kids in a building, you're with other adults, you're with other people. Uh, the safest thing you can do is to absolutely get vaccinated. And especially with the younger ages where masks might be a little bit more difficult to wear yeah. throughout the day, um, vaccinations become all that more important. Okay. Because we know that people who are vaccinated are not getting as sick as much. I can't speak to Omicron, yes. but, but certainly the other waves, you know, we saw a wave of unvaccinated yeah. kids and, and people getting sick. Mm -hmm. So the best way to protect the younger ages uh, is very much a vaccination. So I hope people, you know, it's winter break, hopefully you have a little, uh, not for everybody, I know that, but the kids are out of school. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they can find a time to make that appointment, sorry, and then go in and, um, and get vaccinated. As a teacher, do you ever check on who is vaccinated and who's not i mean Ooh. like i say I yeah mean, i mean really we can't right yeah. there's really no way to know um i'm very i'm very happy that you know I, I teach in an area where most people are taking it seriously so uh we're, we're all vaccinated basically yeah. i don't mm -hmm. think there's too many of us that aren't um i think it's only human to perhaps worry at mm -hmm. times yeah. um and, but I would say this, I would hope that in those situations, like we don't judge, yes. it's not about that. Um, it's just more out of concern, right? Uh, now, typically what I've been finding because of the stuff I do outside of school is that sometimes if you're not vaccinated, you don't want to remember a mask or, you know, like there's interesting kind of realities there. So usually you can, you can tell if someone's really fighting the idea of like, I don't want to get vaccinated. I don't want to wear a mask. Um, you can see that. But at the same time, education is for all. Yeah. So everybody should be coming to school, right? No matter what. That is where I would say though, the rapid tests, 
that we're seeing kind of finally getting handed out in different yeah. areas, yeah. absolutely we would love to see more of that. Because yeah. in the situation where someone says, I'm not vaccinated, I don't want to get vaccinated, I think the rapid tests are at least a way to say, okay, well, at least then, you know, every day or however, you know, however many times the, the regimen might be, you know, we can check and we can make sure so yeah. that we keep everybody safe. It is public health after all. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't just one person. This is not an individual reality. Mm -hmm. This is a collective, right? Public health is for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to say in that case, in those concerns, the one thing our government could do for us is to actually release those rapid tests so that we actually have access to them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have come across people that one parent is for vaccination, mm. the other one is against, <laughs> yes. either is a mother or yeah. the father, and yeah. they say they want to wait round. Yeah. And there is a recent case in Calgary mm -hmm. that they took it to the court. Yes. And the father didn't want the kid to be vaccinated, mm -hmm. the mother did. Yeah. And it's a precedent setting, and that just says, no, as far as it's a health water. I think the mother is in right, because I think they were not living together. Right. So yes. that is good. Because a kid cannot make a decision, yeah. but as an adult, as a parent, what is the best? I, as an adult, have a choice. Yeah. I want yeah. to be anti-vax, that's my choice. Yeah. A child doesn't have it, yeah. and we don't want the child to end up in the hospital absolutely. on ventilators. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right, right? As an adult, it's your choice, and, and you kind of make your own decisions, and oh. the consequences will fall. Uh, I, I always say, you know, but being mindful, though, that... I've, I've, I've met people that have regretted that decision and then got vaccinated mm. because maybe they made someone sick, right? Or they yeah. realized, you know, after afterwards. Or they got COVID and it was quite hard and they realized what they had done. So, yeah, but adults are one thing. For children, I think what COVID has shown us is that we always think we know and then we don't know. Yeah. So at first we thought, oh, it's just the elderly. It's just the long-term yeah, care yeah, facilities, yeah, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden it became the 20 to 40 year olds. Mm -hmm. And then those people were dying and getting sick. Um, and then we got into the younger ages. We started seeing even younger kids getting it, right? Mm -hmm. And then the unvaccinated, right? And now here are with Omicron where people who are vaccinated are getting ill as well. I think the bottom line is that why would you leave that up to chance? Mm. Um, and, and certainly, a child is under your care. They are your dependent. Mm. No matter if they're your child or uh, your foster care, you know, whatever it might be, right? You are their guardian. And as teachers, we are guardians. Like, legally speaking, when they come into our buildings, we are responsible yeah. for our children. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter if you're a parent or not, I, I see that idea of that we need to take care of our children. Mm. Um, ask questions. I think instead of just being anti Ask those questions. Visit a doctor, right? You know, talk to people with the necessary professional background mm -hmm. so that hopefully if you do have worries, they can allay those fears. Um, all, what I see in front of my eyes, in front of, you know, the 47,000 teachers that are in BC, mm -hmm. we see kids that after they get vaccinated are healthy, they're able to participate more, they have less anxiety, you know, they're able to actually take part and not be worried as much as to what will happen. And it's more of a community mm -hmm. because now we can open our doors a little bit more, right? So I would say for a healthier mind, a healthier body, uh, vaccinations are the way to go. And, and if you are concerned, absolutely talk to people don't just google it don't, don't you know there's a lot of misinformation yes. out there oh, yeah. um you know we are very lucky to live in a province that has a lot of incredibly professional yeah. people that you can talk to and i think to me the evidence is right in front of us yeah. um i'm double vaxxed i'm going to get my booster when i'm allowed to uh, i see thousands of people literally every day that are doing just fine and in fact are doing better. And for those of us that are vulnerable, I'm definitely vulnerable to COVID. Um, the fact that I haven't gotten it yet, the fact that I've remained healthy the last two years means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, I want my students to have that as well. We don't want sick kids yeah. in any way, shape or form. And, and I, I would say very importantly, long-term COVID is not a joke. Yeah. Uh, I know people with long-term COVID, they are suffering many, many months after, and, and some of them are being told they will never actually mm. fully recover mm. um that is not something you want to put on your child mm -hmm. uh so legally speaking yeah who knows what the rules are there we know there's been some very interesting cases in terms of medicine and you know whether it's cancer treatments or all kinds of things um i would hope do your homework do your research 
give your child the best chance possible mm -hmm. to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, God forbid we do not want to use, lose young children. We have. Mm -hmm. There have been cases of young children passing away from complications from COVID. I cannot imagine the mental anguish, the, the emotional mm -hmm. realities of, of realizing maybe I should have had my child vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, like you say, that as a teacher, as an educator, you might not ask that straightforward question. Yeah. But the kids, they talked among themselves. Yes, they, they are do. out in the playground. Yes. They said, oh, I went to the doctor and I got yeah. a vaccination and I didn't feel it. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Did you get yours? And the kid that the parents, whatever the issue is with the parents, not be able to. And they say either they do not want to participate in the conversation and they are put in a place, yeah. you know, to say, well, how come you didn't get it? Yeah. You know? Uh, even and masks, then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it's such a sad yeah. thing that the kid has to defend yes. whatever the parents' yeah. issue is. Yeah. They say, oh, I will have mine, or I don't know when I'm going to have mine. They uh, have to make excuses. Yeah, right? our kids are very mindful, smart yeah. human beings. Uh, I know. Uh, in my law class, we actually did debate the vaccine passports, yeah, so we yeah. brought in information, and then I actually separated them. I, I, I didn't let them do their opinion first, and they were so good at coming up with reasons for, against, you know. And, and you know, at the end of the day, they said they're a good thing, but they should be done properly. And yeah. so it's like when you see that level of thinking, that critical thought, yeah. like I, I guarantee you our kids have that critical thought in mind. Yeah. But absolutely, oh my goodness, when those vaccines came out for the younger kids, um, you saw it in the classrooms, right? Oh, yeah. I have my, Miss Hannah, I'm leaving early. And another kid goes, oh, yeah. you lucky you, right? Yeah. You know, like you have these discussions ongoing. They're also seeing all the misinformation online. Yeah. So I've had those conversations of kids that, that have, like these wrong ideas i'm like but that's not actually what the science says right like, yeah. let's look at that so we also have to be careful about that um we always want to give our kids the truth and and we have to be very careful that that we don't just um actually teach our kids the wrong thing because mm -hmm. again that that's going to result in, in some negativity but yeah they're talking to one another and and i think especially i can imagine elementary school teachers mm -hmm. um the discussions that are coming up around you know vaccines and and just learning learning the basics of the body mm -hmm. at that age but even at secondary it's still the same thing mm -hmm. right it's the question about like what is this what does it do um you know why is it useful right yeah i was just the last question i was going to ask you is very quickly I mean, now you're on vacation. Yeah. You're gonna go back in January. Yeah. With this new variant, Omicron, yeah. that's coming around. Do you think there may be a chance that it's gonna go back to what it used to before? Mm. That kids will be studying from home, or because if it's spreading that fast, especially the kids, and uh, do you, or you, it's very hard to predict. What will happen in general? I, I think it's hard to predict, but I would say this. I hope that our ministry, our districts, everybody, yeah. everybody, we've learned. Yeah. So as teachers, are we ready to go remote? Absolutely, yeah. right? We are ready to go remote should it be needed, because at the end of the day, the safety of our kids is more important than, than what we're teaching in our classroom or what plans we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we are ready, right? Mm -hmm. That That's very important. Secondly, I know, I, I've heard from our district, I've heard from a lot of folks that say we are going to be flexible, that if there is a need, we will go. And I want to hold them accountable to that, mm -hmm. that yes, if you see the number of cases skyrocketing, I certainly hope we can be flexible and we can get a sense of where these spikes are happening. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps we can make those quick decisions, again, prevent rather than react. Yes. So if it means a couple weeks remote, then allows us to go back to full instruction in the schools, great. Yeah. I don't want us to be in the situation that we were in March of yeah. 2020, where everything stopped so abruptly, and absolutely that caused major concerns. But I do think I have absolute confidence in our district, in our ministry, and everybody, uh, in, in our teachers, and our union, that, that we can get this done if we need to, and that we continue to say, you know, make it, make those rapid tests accessible, um, get, you know, make sure that our cleaning systems, our air systems oh. are the best they can possibly be. You know, these are all things, you know, vaccinations should be happening, boosters, all of that. We need to keep working on that as well. Um, so I think we're ready. I do. Uh, I just don't want people assuming that we're not, right? Yeah, yeah. We are. And I hope that we are, you know, kind of fast enough so that we keep our health and safety, you know, at the, at the forefront rather than 
the last thing we consider. I can promise people our economy, everything, it won't be as affected if we go remote a couple yeah. weeks yeah. as it will be mm -hmm. if kids are home sick yeah. and forced to be home and then parents are forced to be home. Let's, let's give parents the yeah. best chance to say, okay, I know this is coming. It's going to be for however long, and then we go from there. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays. All of that. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Annie, for your insight in public schools in BC. K Kalsa students, Reunion 2023 in Fiji. If you are an ex Kalsa student and would like to join the rest of your buddies and celebrate with us, please let us know. For more information, please contact Camila Singh at 604 537 5123. Also, Vancouver Christmas Market is taking place from November 13th until December 21st at Jack Polo Plaza in Vancouver. Address is 1085 Canada Place. If you are planning any community events and would like us to promote it, please send it to AsianPulse at gmail.com. Please don't forget to watch Asian Pulse television on Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., Thursdays at 8.30 p.m., and on Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. The Camila Singh Show on Sundays at 5.30 p.m. and Monday at 10 a.m. And don't forget Fiji in Focus on Tuesday at 10 p.m. and repeat Sundays at 4. Last but not least, Viti Vibes, Thursday at 10 p.m. and Sundays at 4.30 p.m. All our shows are also aired in Alberta, and if you missed any of them, you can watch it on YouTube channel at Camila Singh Show. We ran out of time. If you have any suggestions or want to be a sponsor on the show or any other show, contact Camila Singh at 604-537-5123. Thank you.